In popular culture, there are those key words that when people say them, other people think, oh, that's Judaism. Hanukkah? That's Judaism. A Hasidic boy walking down the street, fringes flying. I don't know what that is, but it's Judaism. Shtisel, Kabbalah, the Western Wall, and Tzom Gedalia. Not Tzom Gedalia, that's a minor fast. Among those key words, there's an old phrase that's getting a lot of new, yeah, that's Judaism buzz. And that phrase is Tikkun Olam. It literally means fixing the world, but its go-to translation today has become Jewish social justice. But what's Jewish about it? I mean, who doesn't want to fix the world? Is Tikkun Olam distinctly Jewish, or is it, you know, just a really good secular idea? The phrase tikkun olam does not show up in the five books of Moses or anywhere in the Hebrew Bible. It makes its first appearance in early rabbinic literature. Rabbis were fine-tuning laws in order to repair the world, or as they put it, for the purpose of tikkun olam. But it was not yet considered some great Jewish principle or a central tenet of Judaism. As key words go, it was just arriving on the scene. Around the year 300, it appears for the first time in the Jewish New Year service. Within a prayer called the Aleinu lies the phrase to fix the world, litaken olam, under God's authority. When the world is under God's kingship, it will be the messianic era. The world will be healed. 700 years later, the great rabbi and commentator Maimonides picks up the phrase and says, when you gain wisdom by studying Torah, develop character by doing acts of kindness, and when you observe the mitzvot, the commandments, you bring tikkun olam, you bring God closer to the Jewish people. If you're keeping track so far, tikkun olam is about Jewish theology and the Jewish community. The rest of the world, it should take care of its own problems. The Kabbalists, Jewish mystics, then came along and mixed these ideas of messianism and Jewish observance together and added a twist. For the Kabbalists, the world is broken and contains evil because in the moment of creation, divine sparks broke out of God's transcendent side of existence, fell into the crude material world, and unbalanced the universe. By doing good deeds and observing the commandments, Jews send those sparks back to heaven, restore balance to the universe, and bring the messianic era. And what is more tikkun olam than that? Flash forward 500 years. When the civil rights movement takes center stage in the US in the 1960s, it is the reform movement of Judaism that takes the phrase tikkun olam and turns it into Jewish social action. Reform Judaism focused on the key Jewish ideas of charitable works, acts of love and kindness, and justice. But here, that was it. Torah study and ritual commandments are given secondary roles whose purpose is to protect tikkun olam. They keep us from drifting into moral turpitude, as the kids say, but in and of themselves, not so much tikkun olam. Tikkun olam now becomes a point of concern within the greater Jewish community. There are those today who worry that the progressive approach to tikkun olam is assimilationist. Doing good deeds is fantastic, they say, but if it replaces Jewish observance and Torah study, then it is devoid of Judaism. Progressives counter that for those Jews who don't vibe to the ritual aspects of Judaism, tikkun olam gives them a way to engage and take pride in their heritage. And more to the point, tikkun olam is a central tenet of Judaism. It's almost the point of everything we do. Today, tikkun olam is catching on like wildfire. In Israel, there are over 42,000 registered not-for-profit charitable organizations. 42,000! many of them doing tikkun olam in their own way. And in the U.S., that number is many times higher. Tikkun olam today is, in fact, a multi-billion dollar charitable industry. In the U.S., there are the big guns of tikkun olam. They take care of Jewish communities in danger, promote human rights. They fight on behalf of immigrants. Others mobilize Jewish communities to take action and champion the disenfranchised. Others still work to assuage hunger. This one food bank provided two million meals last year. In Israel, charitable organizations feed and clothe the poor. There is the Israeli National Food Bank, mental health associations, ambulance services. There are organizations that help Jews and Palestinians meet. To Israeli environmental advocacy, there is no end. And the Israeli government itself sends medical teams to places hit by hurricanes and exports trucks filled with water to places devastated by drought. One nonprofit, simply calling itself Tikkun Olam, relieves people of suffering by sending them new strains of cannabis. The list of Jewish charitable organizations seems endless. 
In the end, tikkun olam tracks with many of Judaism's theological arguments. Whether the motivation is to bring the messianic era or to heal the world by working closely with other communities, whether it needs the ritual acts of Judaism and Torah study for it to be Jewish, or it's Jewish simply by living the ethical values of helping God fix a broken world. Either way, when the Jewish community engages in this project, we call it simply tikkun olam, Jewish charitable works. Jews and the greater Jewish community in all its forms and interpretations, working hard to fix a very broken world. It is for this reason that tikkun olam is, for many today, a fundamental, essential, and perhaps the most important element of Judaism. Thanks for watching. This is one part of a series on topics that are central tenets of Judaism. If you'd like to see the rest, please check out the full playlist here, and don't forget to subscribe to keep getting notified of new videos.